Hey guys, welcome to a Bible class for the Weber Road Church of Christ. Today I thought we might talk for a little bit about the fruit of the Spirit. So as you can see, I've got my fruit already and I'm uh, about to start. I thought we might start with the song. Uh oh. Oh no. My apple's missing. My apple's missing. I bet I know who took it. Let's go find out. Can't sing the Fruit of the Spirit song without an apple. It's everybody's favorite. Or maybe a lot of people's, not everybody's. Uh, Mr. Grant, uh huh. What is that you're eating, sir? Hey. Hey. It's an apple. Did you know that I had that out to sing the Fruit of the Spirit with the kids? Uh-oh. So I'm gonna pause right here because I have two choices at this point. I could yell at Mr. Grant. I could tell him he should have known I had it out for a reason. I could say, couldn't you have eaten a banana and just go on and on. Or I can show love and kindness like the fruit of the spirit and just tell him it's okay. Let me think. Okay. It's okay. I'll go see if there's another one. Love you. I'm really glad I didn't yell at Mr. Grant, aren't you guys? Well, one of the things that helps me when I'm angry to not yell or be ugly or unkind is to remember some scriptures. My mom was really good about putting scriptures all over our house when we were little. We would look in the mirror and see a scripture written on it or, or in the refrigerator sometimes. It was pretty fun to look for the scriptures. There was one scripture she made us say every morning if we were grumpy. And it's Psalm 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I only know that one so well because my sister was grumpy a lot and I heard her say it. <laughs> Not really. I said it too. So um, anyway, I want to sing the Fruit of the Spirit song with you guys. Please sing with me uh, after we get our apple and then look for scriptures all around my house. See if you can find a way that I put it all around my house to help me remember how to behave today. Okay, I got my apple. Are you guys ready to sing the Fruit of the Spirit song? Sing it with me. The fruit of the Spirit's not an apple. The fruit of the Spirit's not an apple. If you want to be an apple, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit's not a strawberry. The fruit of the Spirit's not a strawberry. If you want to be a strawberry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the Spirit is. A love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Gentleness and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit's not a kumquat. What? The fruit of the Spirit's not a kumquat. If you want to be a kumquat, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now I'd like to read this book to you. It's called Gilly Greenweed's Gift for Granny, a book about showing love. Gilly Greenweed's Gift for Granny. A Book About Showing Love by Michael P. Waite, illustrated by Barbara Wadowski de Rosa. Deep in the reeds and the bogwater weeds that grow in the shallows of Pollywog Pond, a small cottage rests neath the wild watercress, 
the coziest hut in the bog and beyond. Snug in that cranny lives dear little Granny, who just had a birthday a short while ago. This birthday is why Gilly Greenweed stopped by to stay with her Granny a few days or so. Oh my, they had fun, they swam in the sun, they went for a stroll by the shore. They chatted with frogs and with turtles on logs and picked purple plants by the score. They stayed up all night by the soft firelight, working on puzzles and sipping on tea. They chattered and giggled, they snuggled and wiggled, till Gilly dozed off on her grandmother's knee. Early next morning with Granny still snoring, Gilly got breakfast set out on a tray. Why, oh my, what is this? Granny said with a kiss. What a marvelous present to start off my day. Just then came a rap and a rat-a-tap-tap and in through the doorway came Cousin McMo. That dapper young fella set down his umbrella and out of his coat took a box with the bow. I stopped by, you know, just to say cheerio, he stated while tipping his hat. And to give you this present, you'll find it quite pleasant. Happy birthday, best wishes, all that. Now I must hurry off, he exclaimed with a cough. I'm playing some polo today. Tally ho, off I go, parted Cousin McMo, and he gallantly galloped away. The gift was a necklace of seashells with speckles, pretty as stars in the sky. But Gilly felt awful for not being thoughtful. I've no gift for Granny, she sighed. At noontime they napped, they lunched and relaxed out in the cool of the weeds. And while Granny dozed with both her eyes closed, Gilly wove presents from reeds. Just as she finished her basket for Granny, a buzzing sound shattered the air. Out of the sky came a big dragonfly and landed not far from her chair. Down from the wing of that big buggish thing descended Aunt Olga and old Uncle Gip. By their bright rosy clothes, little Gilly supposed that they come from some tropical trip. Howdy do, shouted Olga. We came like we told you. We've just been to Billabong Bay. Where we got you this gifty, it's real neato nifty. We're sure awful sad we can't stay. Then old Uncle Gip with the speed of a whip was snapping off photos like mad. They waved and they cried, send a postcard, goodbye and they buzzed away looking quite sad. Poor Gilly's eyes opened wide with surprise as out of the box came a pot and some teacups so tiny, so silvery shiny. What good is my basket, she thought. All through the night, Gilly worked in a fright till her poor little back had grown stiff. I failed, Gilly wailed, though I pasted and nailed, I can't make a good enough gift. But I have to keep trying, she muttered while crying, or Granny will think I don't care. Oh, what can I give her to prove that I love her? She dropped to her bed in despair. Long before dawn, Granny woke with a yawn, and there at the foot of her bed, sat a huge wooden box as heavy as rocks with a little note written in red. The note said to Granny, this gift is from Gilly. I know that it's not very good, but I want you to know that I do love you so and I'd give you the world if I could. Whatever could be in this box, wondered Granny. She lifted and prodded and pried. And what a surprise, just imagine her eyes when she found Gilly sleeping inside. Oh, Granny, said Gilly, feeling quite silly. I've nothing to give you, you see. I worked all night through, but the best I could do was to give you a box full of me. Well, 
What a marvelous, glorious, beautiful present, cried Granny while hugging her girl. I'd rather have you and the sweet things you do than all of the gifts in the world. Now, if you should happen past Pollywog Pond and secretly peek from above, you'll still find our gilly showing that really the very best present is love. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you, John 15, 12. That's a really good verse to remember. Jesus told us to love each other just as he loved us. And that's a lot of love because you guys know what he did for us. So I want to show you one more scripture. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I'd like to read a little bit about what love is. Starting in verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And you know, it's important to remember that we're supposed to show that love and all the fruit of the Spirit to everybody we meet. Um, the ones we love, it's easy to be kind to, but sometimes if there's someone who's hard to get along with, it might be hard to show love or kindness, but that's something that we need to work on. And before we finish, I wanted to tell you about somebody who really showed love to me this past week. And actually, it's two people. First of all, you guys, if you've been outside, you've seen that we've been wearing these masks. Well, um, Mr. Grant's mom, Nanny, made masks for us, and she sent them in the mail, and we didn't even know they were coming, but they're really nice and way better than the ones that I made that are already falling apart. And then I just happened to mention that, you know, the elastic kind of was hurting my ears. And Miss Darlene, out of nowhere, you guys know Miss Darlene, she crocheted these um, little straps that go in the back of your masks and you hook this elastic to them and it doesn't hurt your ears. And she brought those to my house and that's, those two things really made me think about love and how much I love them and how, I, you know, if you love somebody, you want to show them. And so they did show that. Uh, with us and I hope that I'll go out today and show love to somebody else so you guys try to do the same try to go out and show that you love somebody today so let's um, end this class with a prayer will you bow with me please dear God we're so glad that you let us get together today and we're so grateful that you love us and that you sent Jesus for us and we're so grateful that you're taking care of us through this time with the virus and we pray for everyone who's sick we pray for all those taking care of them, especially the doctors and nurses, also the firefighters and paramedics and the police officers that come in contact with the sick people. Please keep them all safe. Please help us today to show the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to especially show love, even when it's hard. Help us to be the kind of people you want us to be, more like your son every day. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this Bible class today. And I hope next time we get to do it in person up at the church building. But for now, love you guys. Take care.